didn't really have too much success and uh, have kind of uh, failed to impress in the EU region since then, um, which might be a bit harsh considering, you know, they're, they're not uh, the same caliber as these tier one teams. They're trying to break out into them. I think there's a ton of potential in this stack, and I'm definitely looking to see what they can do. They still seem to be figuring things out a little bit, but yeah, I mean, for a stack that's um, a couple of months old, the fact they're able to take wins off NIP and uh, Viking is, uh, is is impressive in and of itself. Oh yeah, most definitely. I think five men they only formed right before Omega League, and they have improved so so much. And considering that they're sticking together and probably practicing as well, they can only get better with the kind of players that they have. Looking into the series, though, I expect a little bit better drafts from Five Men. I think yesterday they had a really good draft in Game 1 uh, when they played, but Game 2 and 3 was a bit shaky. OG batting out that Enchantress. They know what uh, OG or Five Men were missing yesterday in their drafts and preemptively getting rid of that uh, super obnoxious position 5 hero. It also allows OG to play into Beastmaster too. If your opponent has Enchantress, like you don't even want to pick Beastmaster. And that's one of their best heroes, obviously, on OG. Wow, they are not <laughs> they are not like going away from this Jack Hero. Every time they're gonna get a chance to get Jack Hero, they're just gonna pick it, it looks like. Give that to Sox. And five men getting their tiny this time around. I think yesterday Tiny was just auto bad um, in all of the games for five men. So finally they will get to showcase their tiny. They can mm -hmm. play a mid, they can play a support. It's a very nice hero. It is indeed, yeah. I mean, this hero just offers so much. It's one of the few supports we can burst another support 100 to 0 by himself, which is really, so really dumb. strong. It's so dumb. Toss is just a crazy, crazy ability just to blast somebody out of position so easily. And uh, yeah, he's, he's generally a pain in the ass. Why is there a hero in Dota 2 that can literally, like, 100 to 0 a support with just two spells and it's not even like an ultimate they're they, these spells have like 14 second cooldowns or something that's just ridiculous and five men get the pugna too wow. okay interesting so this is something um in southeast asia is quite popular where you have like this decrepify combo with the tiny avalanche toss and it does like over a thousand damage and then you also got the pugna blast and the life drain on top of that so you can like just as long as they both these heroes combine together you can burst heroes from you know 1300 hp without with that without them even being able to use anything yeah so five men got that going for them a lot of uh low cooldown fighting heroes in the first two picks already and that's really good against og because that's what og wants to do yeah, I almost feel like with these two intro picks, five minutes said, all right, you guys uh, want to play some fast-paced fighting Dota? Like, yeah, we'll just roll up our sleeves. Let's go, kids. We're ready. We're bring ready it. for it. Yeah, bring it. That's what I love to see. And they pick the yeah. Void into the Pugna, which is interesting. Um, usually this is considered just not a great move because you've got the Decrepify, but well, OG don't care. They do not care. Yeah. It's a nice combo. They love this. Still. They love the Void and... Uh... Pair it with other healer heroes. So you got this consistent flow of damage. You know, the time dilation is really good in team fights as well. Uh, and they know that if they don't pick the Void right here, it's getting banned in the second phase. Yeah. They will sure. lose the Oracle though. Five men, you know, that they're not they're not gonna mess around. They're like, yeah, we <laughs> yeah. we this mid Oracle was wasn't a joke. That was scary. They they watched. Yeah. They they've seen the replays. They know what happened yesterday. They they're did. not gonna let that happen. I love that they're uh, banning out the IO as well every time. Everyone who faces OG just bans out IO because, you know, they, they, they'll run that mid. You know No-Tail will run that mid. He'd love to run that yeah, mid. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, great. Or even as a carry team. and then put a... Or, sorry, position one in the safe lane and then put, like, another carry middle. How they do it with mid one and tops and two. Yeah. Well, Beastmaster, Beastmaster getting yeah. banned out from OG. OG, take okay. it out. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, They were... Huh, interesting. They didn't they didn't think that um they would get the beast message themselves or they don't want it in their draft. Ben out the beast. I mean Shibe he plays a really good Beastmaster as well. So a really good hero against the faces void. Constantly pushing the lane into the void, making it really hard for him to rotate around as well. Yeah, I mean the only Elder factor here is that they have the like Jakiro who's not bad against uh, the Beastmaster, so I'm a little bit surprised OG still ban it out, but you know, it's just it's just safe. They don't want one of their lanes having that constant pressure put onto it. So the other side gets banned out by five men. I'm very much strong hero with the void too. Oh yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very much expecting just some brawling Dota coming out from these two teams. I mean, based on the first Definitely. two picks, and I mean, even though OG, I, any other team, I'd look at this draft from OG and said, okay, they want to play it a little bit slower, but because it's OG and we worked with them yesterday, we we know they just want to battle. They just they just want to unleash the chaos, and uh, five men seem to be more than happy for that to uh, happen. They're they're into it. Most definitely. And I think that's how five men, they love playing this um, tower taking, you know, short cooldown kind of heroes and just keep on snowballing their game, which is a very good way to play in the current patch as well. Mm -hmm. And OG, they do have the last pick in this game. So they're going to have to pick right out of this ban phase here. They're going to need something more to deal with this Pogna. Like you said, the face is void. It could be kind of problematic if he gets decrepified and such. And they're going to want something that can just jump and find this Pogna here. And we also know that five men are not afraid to put this Pogna at the position five. We watched uh, Pilot Eye play it yesterday uh, at the five. I wouldn't say it was successful, but uh, <laughs> they are willing to put it at the five. Yeah, they have an idea about how it can work, and that's what matters. Meanwhile, Clockwork actually making its way all the way through to the third pick, which OG will now pick up. So that's going to be something for them to play around with. Mm -hmm. um, not that amazing against Tiny. Tiny can always toss you out uh, when you cog him. Really good against Pugna, though. And especially if it's a position 5 Pugna, you can just solo kill that hero all game long. Yeah. That being said, Pugna will look to buy a 4-staff for himself this game to get away from the clockwork. It would also be really good against Void and Jakiro and good save item in general anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this clockwork, as as we mentioned, is going to be a brawling game, and you, he's one of the best brawlers in the game. You know, he's he's alongside Tiny yep. in strength, uh, especially early on in the lane as well. Battery Soul can be a super powerful ability in the right hands. So, yeah, OG definitely going to be happy to have uh, Saxer on that hero. I was almost expecting him to go for the Earth Spirit again, since they have been really, really keen on the Earth Spirit picks recently. Right, we didn't get to see that the Jakiro and the Earth Spirit. I mean, they. Got the faces void this game. They know it was going to get banned out if they didn't take it right away. So they had to do that. And five men didn't even respect the Earth Spirit. They're like, ah, whatever. Who cares? Do it. Earth Spirit. <laughs> yeah, do it. Yeah, go ahead. Spirit. See what happens. You want to keep playing the same drafts over and over again? Feel free. Or maybe they were like, no, this is OG. They're not going to play the same drafts over <laughs> and over again. They're going to do something else. So let's just ban other heroes instead. And the Venom ban was quite nice. I like it. I think uh, uh, yesterday... Seb had like literally the worst Venomancer laning stage we've seen in a while. And he just, you know, in the mid game late game with all the brawling and the fighting, he just ended up like top net worth or something ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, with like the, the 20 minute long team fights, he was just like, yep, yeah, okay, exactly. I, I'm, I'm the only one getting gold from this in the end. Oh, there it is. The no tail Abaddon coming out. So it's going to be a position three Abaddon. Maybe even a position two Abaddon. And we know that they're willing to swap around the rows on OG side without Thompson playing. Yeah. So no till, but we won't, we do know that, I, or, okay, it's hard to assume anything with OG, but I do think Abaddon will be played by no till. And five men going for a Luna. Wow. Warlock Luna. Okay. That is not a normal lane. Normally when you have Warlock, you will see a weaker carry hero and Spectre preferably like a mind. melee. Right. Exactly. Spectre, um, you know, Sven. anti mage or something. Sure, something that needs a lot of babysitting. And Luna, she's not that good of a pairing with the Warlock, but I see what they're trying to do. They want something that can farm fast, but also provide some auras and some pushing capabilities in your lineup. And Luna can do that. Quite tanky hero too, actually, when you have that uh, Manta, Butterfly, Satanic build going yeah, Sorry. yeah, she doesn't mess around. But one thing to mention about the Abaddon as well is that he's going to have the Aphotic Shield to uh, try and deal with both the Decrepify and, uh, more importantly, the Fatal Bonds and Shadow Word off True. the uh, Warlocks. So, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I mean, I think that even makes it weirder that they've picked the Luna here because that means that the Shadow Word is basically exclusively going to be used on the carry hero. And if it's a Luna, she's probably not going to need it as badly as, say, a melee hero would. But there we go. Yeah, maybe the Warlock was just meant mainly for the laning and, you know, have that strong team fight, that one big team fight that OG will want to take and you got that rock available for you. But we'll see mm -hmm. where this goes from here. Love me some upheaval as well. Yeah, five men are going to have to expose, like, what position this Tiny or Pugna are going to be in with this next pick. 
Mm -hmm. They can flex the tiny and the pugna to like the very end, right? The tiny can be the four, or the pugna can be the four. Yeah, and then the other one will be the position two in this game. That being said, I do think five men need an off lane hero uh, in this game. Someone who can buy some aura items and can just front line. Yeah, and yeah, OG banning out Underlord and Doom. Both of those heroes are actually able to also go mid lane on top <laughs> of going to the off lane too. So true enough. They true understand. Enough. The drafting patterns of five men here yeah the possibility of flexibility is not something they want to come up against too badly so five men final pickup for them what is it gonna be 11 seconds of that reserve 10 time seconds left. yeah they need to mm -hmm. think of it quickly i would like a axe because why not i didn't think about that centaur mars is already Ooh. Huh. oh 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 okay so that means I think the Pugna or the Tiny is going to be the position three, most likely. So you think Pugna mid? Yeah, it could be. Or Pugna, uh, sorry, Pugna position three, Tiny middle, with the Earth Spirit laning with the Pugna. So you got that Ranger against the Faceless Void, who you can just constantly harass the Void, and then the Pugna can just buy you know the utility items and make sure the stays alive and tiny can be the temple controller in this game right so the tiny and the earthquake yeah. can just run around and do stuff that being said though a batting can easily remove fatal bonds and can remove earth spirits ultimate it's an abaddon mid and... it's an abaddon mid yep. or well i mean we we made a promise not to uh not to second guess them but mm -hmm. seb is playing the dark scan mid one's playing the faces void and no tail is playing the abaddon so I am quite sure they're going to put it in the middle lane. And Chessie's going to be yeah. on the Tiny, and uh, Jibay on the Pugna, Mizra on the Earth Spirit, and uh, Pylai yep. die on the Warlock. So we predicted the five men, how they are going to play. That being said, because it is OG, I wouldn't be surprised if Seb just went mid-darks here or something <laughs> out of nowhere. Like, that's just a possibility too, yeah. right? So, well, with, uh, with Chessie um, on the Tiny... I don't know. I feel like the Abaddon's not going to have a good time at mid. I feel like the Darks here could do something at mid. So kind of with you it's there. gonna be okay. Yeah. I think a bad in a bad in middle. Yeah, it should be okay. I mean, it's a it's a melee hero, so you're just gonna hit him with the third skill and just you know, just keep hitting him. I don't think a bad is gonna lose to any melee heroes in general. Um, but who knows what's going through the minds of OG right now? All I know, right? All I know is uh, they just want to buff up this faces void with the ion shell and the shield and just let him go in, or even the clockwork. You can shell up the clockwork. You can shield up the clockwork, and he's just going to hook into a Warlock or a Pugna, even the Luna, and he can just get kills on these heroes. And five men, they need to get this four staff early. Like, they need Pugna to have four staff, they need Warlock to have four staff. Luna will probably end up getting, like, a pike this game or something as well. Five full staffs. That'll be a very important. I can see it happening, mm -hmm. honestly. I can see five full staffs <laughs> actually happening this game for uh, for five men, even if one of them is a Hurricane Pike. Um, I, I can see that being an actual thing. Alrighty then, well, those are our drafts. Let's get into it. Game number one of five men versus OG here in the lower bracket in this best of three series. Who's going to be victorious? Who's going to be going home today? Let's find out. All right, we know. No Tails going mid with his Abaddon. Perfect. And offlane is going to be Seb on his Darkseer with Saxa backing him up. Yep, so uh, this Darkseer Clockwork Lane can be very, very annoying and very deadly as well if you get caught out by that Battery Assault with the Iron Shell coming off on you as well. And that's a huge problem. When you get level 2, you've got Surge, Cogs plus Battery Assault. Ugh, horrible. Scary, scary lane if you get caught out on that one. So Pylai Die is going to have to play this one very carefully. We might end up feeding a little bit. That has to be a concern of his. Oh, most definitely. And that's going to come in like maybe level 3-ish, I want to say. If they try to go out and do that like level 1, level 2, they might just use too much resources on OG's side here. Mm -hmm. There is no tail hanging around. What's his plan? What's he going to scale? Oh, the curse. Yep, curse onto Slow Ace. Slow down the Luna a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's going to get boots, off, but... Or Winlay, so he's not going to be able to catch up to any of these heroes. No, it's a little bit awkward, but, um, you know, no tail just coming in and uh, taking some slices of these heroes. Getting a bit of harass off before he the turns up in lane. Begins. Meanwhile, up at top, mid one is uh, going to get the rune off Shibe as well. Shibe just trying to get some right clicks off onto mid one. Make them trade a bit of HP for them bounty runes. Always an important concept when you're uh, looking at these lanes. So three bounties going the way of OG. Small win. 
for them here. I'm quite concerned about uh, mid one's lane because every time you get decrepified, you're not going to be able to get a last hit, and you're going to get outranged and harassed by the Pugna. The Jakiro, maybe you can push a lane out with a dual breath, but he's not going to be doing this void any favors. No, certainly not. This uh, void is going to be, well, I don't know. I, I think this is going to be a bad lane at the top for, uh, for OG. Is, is that a bold prediction? No, it's not a bold prediction at all. I think it's pretty accurate. Uh, but when Misery does leave the lane, I think mid one is going to have a pretty decent time. But early on, at least, I think Shibe with this Decrepify is going to make it uh, living hell for this for mid one to get last. It's, he doesn't have any spells that he can use. Look at Socks and Misery just fighting off on the side here. Socks really doesn't want Misery to just keep on blocking this small camp, and he's going to make him trade a decent amount of HP for it, but he still does come in and get the block, which is going to be quite annoying for him. Um, he won the middle lane. No tell actually getting a decent amount of damage off onto Chessie already, starting things out. Oh, bottom. Pylidite. Just a little bit of damage with that Iron Shell and the Battery Assault. Meanwhile, Seb has, has the Creep Wave in front of his tower. So he's going to get those creeps for free. Gets the range deny already. And Saksa just going to go back here where Ace has pulled the creeps and try to pick up what XP he can. It was a really good place from OG. Just trying to split up the creep waves, make it uh, annoying for them, or maybe make them lose a little bit of extra XP at least. Because once they are level 3 on this uh, clock and darks, there's going to be a lot of kill potential in this bottom lane. Nice rock from Misery though to steal the last hit on that, uh, that Mr. Sensor. Good job. Interesting that Jibbe is uh, using Decrepify on his range creep to try and stop the lane pushing. I haven't seen that before. Cute. Mm -hmm. Didn't see that Meanwhile, well over in middle lane, so far, so good. Baden's doing all right. He's uh, drawing pretty even in the middle lane and not actually getting a decent amount of harass onto Chessie, but he, Chessie has been able to uh, rush this bottle, so uh, no tell. Yeah. Gonna be having to play into that. No tell has only. He only needs to be careful of the toss back uh, into the tower and getting avalanched, essentially. But right now, Tiny is only level 3, doesn't have that toss scaled up quite yet. And maybe later with the Earth Spirit rotation to mid, they should be able to get at least one kill before No Tail gets to level 6, I think. Meanwhile, Saks are dropping very low in the bottom lane with these uh, fatal bonds. Palladai almost able to finish the job, still trying to get some Oh no, to he's like, but... stop! Yeah, he's okay. Seth, stop taking damage! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's alright. He's got a Fairy Fire too, if he really needs to use that. Just waits for it to run out. Healing style back up. Looks like they're doing well on three lanes right now, on five men's side. Yeah, yeah, it, it's all green at the top right now. I mean, middle lane is a little bit of a draw, but uh, with Chessie now getting some creeps under the tower, he's pulling ahead a little bit. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I think um, this, is, this is what we've seen so far, though, from OG's lanes. Uh, especially with Sack. Oh, that's going to be a kill on Spylight Diet. Meanwhile, Luna down to the Annie's. bottom lane getting run down. It's going to be the both of them killed off. That level three on Seb, the level two on Clockwork, and both heroes fall in the bottom lane. That's what you want to be Huge seeing kills. if you're an OG fan. Meanwhile, up at top, Jimmy and Sox just trading a little bit. But um, yeah, I mean, this bottom lane now pretty much belongs to OG, right? Radiance bottom tower. Is yeah, it does. Happen. It's going to be a lot more difficult for five men now to try and uh, stay here without that, without, you know, Fearing of dying, essentially. This uh, clockwork just instantly TP back to base, got full resources, has boots and wind lace now. So it's going to be a lot easier to chase down either the Warlock or the Luna. Yeah, that's true. The uh, two of them just, well, they got to be so, so, so careful. Gotta keep really far back. I think the, the Warlock especially, as I mentioned before, he does stand mm -hmm. a chance of just falling into a trap, into a cycle of feeding if he's... Uh, not respecting this uh, combination. Luckily, Seth doesn't have a top. Ah, she's got Mango, he's fine. Oh, here we go. Mid lane. Earth Spirit TPing in. Yeah, no tell could be in some trouble. This Almost. roll does connect. The damage is in. The right click to shield. Is it going to be enough for no tail? It is not. He's going to get beaten on down by Chessie. They've actually got a decent amount of damage off before he did die, but die he certainly do. And that's going to be 20 seconds dead for him. Meanwhile, down the bottom lane, Saks are playing around a little bit, but it's all good. They hasted. Uh -oh. Tiny. Uh oh, Ava. Got a toss. toss. Whoa, the clockwork. He's losing his life here. The tree's going to follow up as well, and Saks is going to fall. And he gets a bounty. They get both of the bounties. Oh, they got all the bounties. No, no. Saks got one bounty. Saks got one. Top. Yeah. Yeah. All right. 
delicious. And uh, delicious he gives one so. bottle charge to the Earth Spirit, so he can actually go bottom and maybe make some kind of a counterplay on this clock and darks here. We're gonna look to put some pressure down here. Catapults are out now, so OG will try to see if they can apply any kind of pressure on any of these lanes with the catapult. Yeah, what are we thinking? Most likely bottom lane. Yeah, most likely bottom, and that's why Misery is already down here, uh, setting up, waiting for that aggression to come in from OG and just ready to punish them. Yeah, yeah, he's uh, playing the defense, playing the bodyguard. Uh, meanwhile, up oh, mid, no -tail, mid. onto no tail. He's gonna be in six. some trouble, but yeah, the six comes out. Our time comes through. Gonna tank some hits from the tower as well, just to make sure he's uh, getting a bit of healing from that one, and that's uh, just gonna be a bit awkward, really. Mm -hmm. Still, no ulti so, could result in a kill onto Notel a little bit later on if the Espirit wants to rotate in on towards its middle lane. Not sure though. Looks like he's, bottom. Yeah, he's sitting bottom. The Espirit. So, uh, who's gonna be the first one to take the initiative and make uh, the first play this game? I think mid mid lane right now. Notel has uh -oh. an ultimate. He's dead. Oh god, yeah, he's he's definitely killed off. No tail is gonna fall oh, in this middle lane. Yeah, yeah. Chessie with the DD just doing way too much with the toss yeah. back as well. Getting the easy kill. Mm -hmm. I think the initiative is just gonna come from the tiny here. Like he's the big boy on this map. Pilot Eye getting cogged up. Yeah, he's gonna get run down here, unfortunately. They've got the double iron shell, and that's gonna be an easy kill for Saxa and Seb in the bottom lane. Gotta be so careful. I mean, they're, they're, I, I don't think he can be careful enough, to be honest. I think he's gonna die if he's in the bottom lane at any given point. Like, there, there's just such an easy way for them to take him out. Yeah, definitely. And OG are constantly looking on the map for the Earth Spear and the Tiny, how much resource they have, if they use their TPs or anything like that. Because if those guys are fight ready, then this Warlock might just be a bait. And that was a really nice play from Saxa there. Seeing that the Earth Spirit was middle, made that big aggressive move on bottom onto the Warlock. But I don't think they can always do that. If next time they do that, they might just get punished here. And Pilot Eye gonna get a nice D ward. His ward actually spots him out. Earth Spirit coming bottom. It's gonna be an engagement here. Yeah, let's see what they can make happen. The roll forward. It's actually landing onto the both of them there. Seven sacks are both taking a bit of damage. Is it gonna be enough though? The wall comes down, and now Bonks. the eclipse being pumped by AC. Can't finish it off here. Finally drops it down, but dies just Whoa. as quickly. Both heroes are dead. It took them way too long to get off that eclipse. Both heroes just end up melting to the battery assault and that iron shell damage. They completely didn't respect it there, and five men dropped two more heroes. Yeah, mid one comes to the party. He's like, oh, it's already over? Uh, Alright, I guess I'll just farm over here and that wall was really nice too and we that's something we have to consider in this game every time the dark side gets a wall on the luna you get that moon glaze but you also get that lunar blessing for your team which is a really nice aura radiance bottom tower is under yeah, attack it's cute meanwhile should be trying to find socks here has actually done so socks should be in some trouble he's got the decrepify just gets him with the right click though regardless um dragon gets caught out trying to hide in the trees another sad death for socks at top and Ace has actually turned up to his top lane as pushing down that tower. He really wants to uh, oh, get middle, that middle tiny down. Oh, uh, yeah. Up. Where's the follow-up? Seb's turning up to this one. Misery throws a stone across, but Jesse, he's just getting run down by Seb and by uh, the, the clockwork here. Can they finish the job, though? They need a little bit more. The roll is not going to connect oh, yeah, on to... Oh, they can't quite get in. Saxa trying to finish it off, but I don't think this one's going to happen. Looks like Chessie's going to get himself away. Saxa's still trying to chase as best he can. They actually get off the cogs onto him as the Avatos comes in from Chessie. Chessie gets a kill. Seb can't find his way into the cogs to finish off the tiny. And now he comes back into his teammate, but Sox is there surely through the flames they can Good. get the kill. He will go down, but now Misery is actually finding himself surrounded by OG heroes. I don't even know how they all got here, but suddenly they turn up and they just straight up murder the guys. So Misery's going to drop. And uh, yeah, it, literally, where, where did that Dyer's void come from? Is under attack. He, not only the void, where did Jakiro come from? Tiny yeah, is literally. like, wait, what? There's a, is Jakiro on my team? And then he's just like, okay, I guess I'm just dead here. Radiant Finally, the soul. And they want to put some pressure on this rotations. tower now. Let's see, Seb running into Jibbe. Jibbe's going to be the next target on the list right now. I mean, he's... Wow, there's just a lot of damage coming out from that team currently. Meanwhile, Ace turning up for this fight. Maybe they can make something happen in Maybe Misery's rolling in the back lines. Ace, he's got a decent amount of damage rolling through with the Moonglaze. And it looks like Sox is going to lose his life along with Seb. No Tail all by himself doesn't have the borrowed time. He's going to die as well. Three heroes finally caught out for overextending and finished off by the side of five men. That was just not respecting the respawn times, I think. Yeah, and the upheaval, the tiny, it just was way too much. It, it looked like a really good kill onto the Pugna, but 
all of five men was available there too. And this is the power of the Tiny, right? Tiny is always fight ready, no matter what. Yeah. He has like the smallest cooldowns for very high damage output. And he's gonna have a Blink Dagger soon as well. He's at 1900 gold already, 10 minutes in the game. This is insane. Yeah, you can see him just trying to blast through his creeps here to try and finish it off. Unfortunately, he does miss all of those uh, melee creeps, which is a little bit unfortunate. Let's slow things down a bit. Cast a curse. <laughs> indeed. We're watching indeed. him. So, Aluna currently sitting with Morbid Mask, looking for the Mask of Madness as quickly as possible, and she's currently cleaning through an ancient stack as well, so should be on the way towards that Mask of Madness very, very quickly. Meanwhile, the Faceless Void, he's actually already finished off his Midas and Power Tread, so mid one in a great mm -hmm. position in this game so far, currently seeing a 5.2k net worth, the highest in the game. Very good stuff from mid one. Yeah, this is the Lofi music, Faceless Void right here. Oh yes. Just chilling. Hasn't even felt the need to use Chronosphere. Just really? keeps on farming. I, I don't know when the last time mid one had such a chill game. Yep. Playing carry. He's got them lo-fi beats on, dude. He's uh, got lo-fi beats to uh, relax and farm to. It always kind of feels like he's doing like a million things at the same time. When he's normally he playing carry here. Oh, top. Shibe gets hooked on. Yeah, he's this getting what you roasted. Fear. Here, There's the oven. There it is. The cogs with the macrofire. The oven is switched on. And the pugman's going to be served up for a delicious Radiant's breakfast for Uji. Oh, it feels so bad to play if you're Pugna playing against Clockwork. This Clockwork Dyer's always has his eyes on you. Mm -hmm. He's actually going for an Aether Radiant's Lens first too. Not even a four staff, so... He's going to be food for the Mid clock lane. for a Toss long back. time this game. Onto No-Tail here, but he's got the borrowed time, so he's not really too worried about the circumstances right now. The rest of the team coming on over to help out as well. Meanwhile, Chessy has got to pick himself up a haste rune on the sidelines. And OG, they will hold steady. It's all about the middle tower this game, have... I think. Oh, definitely. Both teams are going to protect this till the bitter end. And Paladai does have his chaotic offering available. Oh, Chessie goes in with the blink. Yeah, there on it is. Yeah, on to the toss. A little bit disconnected there, so I don't think he got the bonus damage from the toss. And well, well, oh, mid one coming down on the low ground. Drops the chrono, but just as he gets decrepified and sits there staring at Shibe for the entire duration. Meanwhile, Hookshot comes to the back line. Eclipse comes down as well. It's all hell breaks into trying to drop down the Kedic offering, but he can't do so. He's dead. Buyback from Paladai. Really wants to drop this golem here. They're going to be able to kill off Sax on the side. Meanwhile, no tell. He just runs himself out. They know what this buyback was about and they just want to get themselves out. And that's exactly what they do. Or will they? As Chessie comes back in, the toss back onto no tail. He does have the borrowed time in one second. Can he get it up in time? Oh my god, he gets it. He just about bloody gets it. No tail survives for now. But the tower might be the target here. Is they actually going in behind the tower because that's how you take it. And the have a toss onto mid one. Mid one can't get the time walk off in time. He's gone. Now mid one. Oh, well, look, you're coming towards misery. Misery's actually going to go to a tower in a miscall. Meanwhile, Sox being bounced around with these glaives. They're using the golem to tank the tower so they can do whatever they want. But now Seb TV's back in. They're not done with this. Seb's sitting behind Pilot Eye. Look how slow they are by the people, though. But that now runs out. And Pilot Eye's time on this earth is rapidly coming to an end. He's going to go join that golem of his in hell as they get that kill. 55 seconds now dead for Pilot Eye after that dieback. And the tower survives. That's still, a very, that's still a pretty good engagement for Feynman, I gotta say. I think the Tiny and the Luna got a lot out of all of that. The tower middle is alive, and I think the Tiny is still ready to continue fighting here. OG's like, all right, we're, we're not done. This Warlock is dead for 30 seconds. You guys only have four heroes alive. If the Luna wants to come here and die, feel free. But we, this is ours. Hook shot in, they're actually going in behind the tower as well, and there's your oven switched on by Socks, and they're trying to heal him up. Shibe, though, unfortunately, doesn't have enough health to keep Chessy alive. The time is going to drop up, and now that the time to OG's hand it shall fall, they do have their wall up in 10 seconds, but without their Chaotic Offering and without their Eclipse, they realize there is nothing they can do to keep this tower alive, and it will go the way of OG. But maybe once the Tiny is alive again, we might see that coming out from Five Men, where they make the move onto the mid tower of OG next. I see the pings attack. coming out onto that tier one tower right now, on the mm -hmm. side of Five Men here too. Oh yeah, they want it. They oh, want it badly. Slog fest at the moment. Both teams have very short cooldown skills. They want to keep on utilizing the strengths of the heroes, the timings. I'm kind of surprised about one thing. Luna, Ace, like he went for the 15 attack speed talent instead of the 350 cast range. 
I'm not sure about that. I, I think even carry Lunas nowadays and just go for the 350 cast range is so good when you get to fight and mini stun and cancel abilities and such things like that. So yeah. maybe a missed opportunity there for uh, Ace. Yeah, I mean, my guy just kind of feels like he's locked in a farm war against the Void and just wants to <laughs> wants to beat him, you know? I, I know that feeling. Your pride is at stake here if you don't farm faster than him. Take every advantage you can get. All right, so 50 minutes into this game, we get a rare breather. OG were able to successfully take the enemy mid tower, and that's going to open up the map a lot for them. And now they're looking to find some pressure in the bottom lane. Might not be so easy, but maybe they just want to kind of force them out of their own jungle. But I don't think five men really need to answer this, to be honest. Chessy is hanging around by the tower. Just feels like a weird place for OG to try and fight, though. Yeah, definitely. I think you just want to keep on pushing in top and mid and maybe try to make OG react to your pressure and go back to the top lane. Top tower mm -hmm. Might be a little bit better. I'm assuming you still have a Glyph available for the tier 2 tower as well. The only thing concerning is uh, Liquid Fire kind of just stops your tower from doing any damage. So. Yeah, the annoying ability slows the attack speed of towers. Never pleasant to play into. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, mid one, so mid one went for the hand of Midas into the hood of defiance, and now looking for the MKB starting off with the Demon Edge. A very interesting build from him. Yeah, it is. I, I like the hood though. This is the item that you need to buy against Tiny, and you also yeah. play against Pugna. It's like all magic damage essentially on five man side, so it's quite nice. Yeah, reason. you survive through I that burst. You get that off the time walk, and you keep yourself nice and healthy. Exactly. The only way you really die as Void is if you initially get bursted. Mm -hmm. I just want to say that Soxa has been playing so well this game from the laning stage to now he's just not hesitating one bit with his initiations as soon as he sees a target that he feels like he can kill with that iron shell he just goes on in he trusts his team completely that they're gonna follow up 6-3 and 6 right now extremely high impact in the game and Jibe is just kind of hiding in the tree line. Nearly gets scouted <laughs> out by Saxa with the flares, but not quite. Yeah. They got a good word here too Radiance from the Radiant side that spots all this OG stuff. I, I love what uh, five men are doing. They keep pressuring this top lane with the Pugna and OG can't help but feel like they need to react to this Pugna pressure instead of five men Radiance constantly just trying to defend off OG attack. down here in a very bad spot. That being said though, uh, five men need to make some really big split push plays or else OG might just walk into the Roshan pit. It's always a big threat. Yeah, it's always a big threat. I think um, Ace needs to kind of stay in this lane, but he sees Saxo, it's just such a big threat on the map. This, this clockwork, you know, he hooks you, he cogs you, you're not going to get out of there in time before the Void turns up, and then you get chronoed and exactly. then you're, you're crying many salty tears. Meanwhile, Jimmy is just trying to siege the middle tower just by casting Nether Blast from the trees. <laughs> Gotta get that tower somehow. Oh, some high octane you know stuff. We here. haven't looked at. We, we completely forgot that no is a core as well in this game. Yeah, he, he has right now. Absorb. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He wants to be removing those Decrepifies, the uh, Warlock's Fatal Bonds. This Warlock isn't even skilling Fatal Bonds. He just went for the uh, level up on Upheaval and his Shadow Ward instead. Oh, yeah. big engagement. Fast forward and now they jump forward mid -to Well, he's still rolling off to the back lines here. Should be okay for the time being. They're looking for Chessie. They're looking for the big target. They still have this Chrono Spear. Do drop it down, but just as he gets to Crepify, so he's going to sit there and stare at Chessie. Now he comes out of it. The real damage starts to come in. Zibbe trying to keep him alive with the oh, life drain, healing up Chessie. And this time he's successful in doing so. But me on the backside of the fight, they've lost the Saxa. So Chessie comes in onto Sox. Sox goes down. They'll look to go for more here, maybe. Maybe not, actually. OG have already lost two. And it looks like five men are a little bit hesitant on chasing for anything more than this, so they will just call it quits. Did they get the tower? They did not. They kept their tower alive on the side of five men, so it's something. It's something. Yeah, that was actually a pretty good engagement where the clockwork got the Luna cogged up, but I think mid one was too busy um, zoning out the other heroes near the mm -hmm. tier 2 tower, so they weren't actually able to bring down Ace there. Overall, a very good exchange for five men. They yeah. only lost um, Misery in exchange for Saxa and Sox. And now they're going to be able to get a little bit of breathing room, push these lanes out. The Luna's going to be able to complete her BKB. That's going to make her extremely 
tanky in the fights, I want to say, because a lot of OG's damage is magical. Faces Void finally completing that Monkey King bar, so he's got a uh, pretty big damage boost. And they're going to look to do Roshan, I think, on the side of OG once the next uh, Chronosphere is up. They want to bait some fight out where five men have to run into OG instead of OG just trying to chase them around the map. Mid one's just hitting a huge damage spike here, though. With that uh, Midas one King bar, he's got the attack speed, he's got the damage, Ooh, he's got Dark the procs, but me all down at the bottom, okay. they have lost the Dark Seer already. Seb's gotten taken down, Sox tried to save him, but came in a little too late with that Ice Path, and now will just fly himself away. Uh, Tiny's still interested, he's got the blink in three seconds, we'll see if he can close the gap, but it doesn't look like he will be able to as Sox is on the run. So he will just give up the goose for the time being. Meanwhile, Ace just continues to put on the unrelenting pressure up in the top lane. He's uh, actually got himself a full Hurricane Pike on that Courier, so uh, there's another 4 stuff coming out for them. Huge Let's see, what's our 4 Oh, he actually doesn't go for the BKB then? Yeah. Okay. Alright. See, this is another reason why you would want your cast range talent, right? Mm -hmm. For your four staff, for your hurricane mm -hmm. pike, you can like hurricane pike your allies. You can pike one of your opponents into you, which would be really nice too. It's like an eight hundred and fifty cast range on a Luna. That's pretty insane. Be be, be a bit naughty, Radiant wouldn't it? Be scared. a little bit of fun. Yeah. Yeah, Dyer's but we're heading towards four four staffs. Tiny's the only one who is not building a four staff, disappointingly. But there you go, four right. four staff still uh, a good amount. <laughs> That's pretty cool, right? We talked Dyer's about how this game there could be five. Attack. Yeah, but <laughs> they just have to. They just have to. The clockwork yeah. is just way too annoying, and this four staff is like the best way to deal with this iron shell problem they have. And now into the Roche Pit we go, mid one and no tail, chunking away at the big scaly boy. Sox, Saxa and Seb all smoked up behind them. Are they really not doing anything about this? I mean, it's, it's getting oh, it's too slow. They might not get here in time. Oh, they're too slow into the pit. OG will take it down. Oh, the five men. Oh, and a hook shot across. A nice long one there from Sax. It's getting on the very edge of the range, and it looks like Misery will be losing his life here as well. So an Aegis and a Misery. And now they'll look to get the middle tower as well. Here comes the wild faces void now with that Aegis. He's gonna be Go. surged up, Iron Shell. He does Radiant not care about anything attack. anymore. We watched this with in the Aegis last game the... with Miracle when he had yeah. Aegis. We're gonna see it again now with mid one. It's a, this is a lot more farmed of a void. Oh yes, he is. He has to be feared. This man, he has to be feared. Radiance middle tower. Gonna get the tier two. Attack. That means outposts are open now for OG to take. He's going for a Scotty next fall. on the Void, more HP, so there's going to be more room for Abaddon to work with. Heal up. Luna's actually farming directly under the Observer Ward here. They want to get her. They've got heroes coming in. Ace is in some trouble. Mid one's moving up. Saxa moving over from the side. They move towards the tree line here. Going for the TP out. Here? Saxa. Oh, the creeps! The creeps blocked the hook shot. Ouch. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that angle wow, looked like it was gonna good. hit the Luna too. It really did. It really, really did. But unfortunately, I mean, there's just a creep like next to him. I like the way he turned around and just murdered the creep wave out of frustration afterwards. I'd do <laughs> the same, but man, that doesn't feel good. Well, you know, we, we don't know if we've got it anyway. It would have been blind, so. Yeah, would have, could have, should have, you know. Didn't. Oh, well. Yeah, and I think Ace, he really needs to finish his BKB. I know the Pike is a cool item and all, but. Without the BKB, I'm not sure Ace is actually ready to take any engagements. They don't have like a whole lot of saves considering there's a bunch of magic damage coming out from OG, the Chronosphere. So, gotta get that BKB. Definitely do. Decrypify is not really a save in this game, I wanna say. Uh, not so much, no, there's way too much magic damage coming out from OG with the Ichikiro, with the Darks here, most importantly. It's uh, it's a bit of a trap. Not too hard to trap going for next. Yeah, he's, he's got Lotus Orb, BOTs, normal stuff. Oh, and oh, Sax is going to come in onto Jibe here. Mazuri is going to make the roll and the full stuff away to Jibe. He's might be keeping him out of danger. And Sax is actually the one losing his life here. Chassis will take him down with this double damage rune. He's nothing to be messed with. No tell there. He's sticking around and Seb's going to join this party. Then was joining him as well. They're looking for the target. Meanwhile, the Kaelic Huffering comes on down here, but it's not going to save Mazuri's life. He's still going to die to mid one and mid one moving across the wall. See Tiny here instead. Chassis in the trees just getting annihilated by No tell and mid one. They get Another hero bought on down here. The Kodak offering doesn't do a single thing. And meanwhile, Ace continues to farm, desperately looking for the big. Wait. 
He's actually queued up a Manta next. Oh, okay. And he also used the Eclipse in that engagement and did absolutely nothing. Dark Tear just oh, he like, did? okay, sure. Literally didn't notice. <laughs> yep. It turned he nighttime for a little while. And Dark Tear's like, okay, Radiant's sure, pipe. Essence Thanks ring. The spell. Right. He's out. And this He's this out. looks like it might be a high ground play, possibly even. Oh, the creep wave. Oh no, Pylai died. <laughs> the same here. But this is Catch the golem, catch going. the golem, but this dude's fast. Yeah, I, I think OG didn't realize there was actually three creeps going into the base anyway. <laughs> yeah, oh, they yeah, have Chrono up. They have like uh, another minute and a half on Aegis. They probably feel like they want to go into the high ground, especially with that Eclipse on cooldown. They got Guardian Greaves, they got Pipe. D this is like high ground siege ready OG right now. Yeah, it is all business, business, business for OG. Five men, they need to be ready for this. Luna, what is a play? What is a build? Oh yeah, she's skipping the BKB entirely. Ace does not want to BKB this game. Okay, all right, sure, I guess. Still problematic against this uh, clockwork then. Uh, you're just so dependent on that pike and the four stars from your allies to save you. Mm -hmm. The dark seer really wall as well and the vacuum. Oh man, it feels so painful to like skip BKB against dark seer and clockwork. And Jakiro I mean, too. You know, Jakiro. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, I'm not so sure about this. Well, we'll see what happens, you know. All right, it's, what's uh, the best very... way to defend this high ground, Theoden? Talk us through it. What would you All do? All right, um, well, I guess you got to wait for the Jakiro to show up, and then you toss him back with your Tiny, kill the Jakiro off first, try to make it a 4 versus 5 fight, and then you just try to pick off the weak heroes like Clockwork. I think Clockwork is probably the second weakest hero after Jakiro. I don't think you're killing Darkseer or the Abaddon. At all. The Faces Void obviously has an Aegis, so the best thing to do is just wait for the Jakiro to walk in and try to liquid fire the tower and then toss him out. Yeah, That's think, the way uh, I would call okay. this fight. Sounds like a plan. I think the Dark Sea is a little, a little bit too tanky, as you say. It would be really nice to get that team fighter out of the equation, but the guy mm -hmm. is just a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a beast. It, it would be possible if uh, Darkseer does walk up to Ion Shell the Void or something and you can toss him back into your team. Maybe there's a small chance you can burst him, but the Zabaddon has Lotus Orb, Apothic Shield, can pop the ulti on himself as well if he gets stunned up and like save this Darkseer. Because once the Darkseer gets like a shield on him, he's going to pop the Greaves, the Pipe, the Essence Ring, and this guy is like impossible uh, at that point. Something came up. He's B soon. Sorry. Ooh. Interesting. Okay. Wonder what came up. Who knows? Uh, anyway, let's have a look at some item progressions because Baden, no tail, he's got this Aghanim Scepter queued up. Very interesting pickup. So this used to be popular uh, a little while ago and mm -hmm. then it kind of fell out of popularity. I think they nerfed it a little bit. I, I can't quite remember, but basically there was like this blink Abaddon thing where you just blinked into the middle of the team fight, uh, popped borrowed time and then just started like madly healing your teammates with miscoils. So yeah, a blast from the past here. Interesting. Do you remember it? I I think I, I wasn't playing Dota at that time. It was must have been during the break, you know, when I was mm -hmm. taking a break for my wedding and things like that. But yeah, I don't remember that one bit. <laughs> so, must <laughs> it, have been it, like it a start like of a last month, year, right? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay, yeah something cool. like that, something like that. But um, yeah, well, it wasn't like you know, it was maybe like uh seven or eight pro games or something where, where people were giving it a go. But yeah, that's, essentially the idea was just blink into the team fight, pop borrow time, and then start healing up your teammates as, as quickly as possible. Interesting. It I like the old I like the old one where uh, you when you have bro time on, your team takes less damage. It was pretty OP. Yeah, I remember some strats with that and then the uh, old Svenags, which gave your team part of God's strength for some oh, reason. Oh, yeah. That was hilarious. And you, and people, I remember people used to use that with um, Brewmaster. So the Brewlings get like plus hundreds of damage and then the Earth Panda can also do a bunch of damage on buildings and stuff. I think yeah. it was like uh, during the Wings days, they did something yeah. <laughs> like that. They also did uh, Brewmaster with Invoker and they would alacrity the Earth Panda that did extra building damage and kill off buildings instantly. It was like three-shotted Raxus. Or some insane things. There's there's so many things in Dota that used to be so broken. Indeed. That people indeed. just that's forgot some... about. The yeah. talent, the respawn talent timers for some reason. That was a thing. That was a bad idea. 
Oh, I don't even remember that. Jeez. Ugh. Yeah, yeah like, I think Lone Druid had like a minus 30 second oh, yeah, I respawn remember. time. Ugh. <laughs> oh my god, why? Yeah, why? Supports, supports as well with respawn timers are just absolutely broken. Yep. yep. GPM talents, that was cool. 420 puck, never forget. Level 25. <laughs> 420 puck. That was great. Yeah, uh, but Puck's had some. I think I was gonna best about to say some of my favorite talents. I think the Puck, um, Dreamcore Rapid Fire is is so funny. Yeah. Then I mean, I get the... tilted when we're like, you know, twenty minutes into a game and my Puck suddenly building like a Mjolnir, going like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna get the twenty five talent. I'm like, dude, I, <laughs> I hope we won the game by that point. But planning for a twenty five talent is is a stupid move. But it is very funny when you get there and you've already got a couple of right clicky items. How about level 15, Io gives Aghanims to your tethered ally. Yeah, that was wild. That was wild times. That was absolutely bonkers. Oh, we're going. Alrighty, Game's alrighty, on. let's get back into this high ground push. Mid one is going to lead the charge, but Misery's going to throw them a stone. Let's see if that plan about throwing the Jakiro comes to fruition here. Tiny is waiting. Chessie is looking for something. Rose in the avalanche, blinks himself back. Just trying to kill her off the creep wave here more than anything. Jive as well thrown in a spell or two. They've actually seen Misery on the side here. The Ice Path catches them out, but they won't be committing to this one much. Misery just making himself a little hole in the trees. Void time walks back to cancel out the uh, Life Sapper. Saxa seems to be toying with the idea of jumping Ace here, but Ace does have a DD, so not too sure if he wants to go for that. They really want to catch Ace. Look at the, look at Saxa. Oh, do. oh, the hook shot misses. Hook shot off the mark again. He tried to go for it blind and didn't quite land. And now, well, the Chrono Spear is going to come down. They should be able to catch the Lunar here. The Macrobar comes down along with the Ice Path. They have enough damage to get through the Lunar. And the little blue lady will be put to sleep. OG, now look, uh, look at these lines drawn on the map as well. They have one plan. Get onto that high ground. Or do they? Maybe not. Well, they got to get not. these lanes out first, right? Look at bottom, look at middle. The lanes are like pushed onto uh, towards OG. So once they get this mid wave in, they'll probably commit to something middle. While this Aegis is still up. Uh, actually, Aegis is out now. That's it. It's done. It's over. It's... Yep. They should be a bit careful now because the Void can get tossed out, tossed back into five man side and there's no Chrono available too. And there's some potential for him to die that way. Warlock will have a Chaotic Offering in two seconds here. Secret being used. Blimey mid one. He's just going in. Remember, you don't have the ages anymore, son. That is a risky move. With the Luna still dead, he's feeling pretty invincible. And that's here. Three tower starts to be sieged by the void. Jump away with the time walk. I might die. Throwing down a few spells. Lotus Orb used to purge it off. This no tail is just buffing up mid one. Glyph to the end of the air. They're just delaying this as much as they can. They don't have the tier three items yet, but if they could find themselves like a repair kit on five men, all this plays OG is doing right now is really going to amount to nothing, actually. She's going a secret journey to the jungle. It's the only way. Mm -hmm. Tiny managed to split push bottom a little bit, get himself some gold, take the tier 1 tower down there as well. Tower mm -hmm. 500 health still. Oh, they're... oh, oh okay. All right. <laughs> just... Yeah, that was a play. That was a plan all along. They just wanted to bait them out a bit, you know. Yeah, some gymnastics going on there on the side of five men. Most certainly. Most certainly. Oh, oh Tiny getting, ice getting ice ice jumped on maybe, although he's got the decrepit fire on him. He wants to step around the side. I mean, they do actually have the high ground here on five minutes. They've got a great entry to this fight as they wrap around the back. Ace just dropping the Eclipse and jumping in. They're using the Hurricane Pike aggressively as they're going to follow up with the Chaotic Offering as well. Mid-1 just going to have to time walk off a bit of this damage. Now damage starts to come through onto Ace. Ace, Ice Path still in the middle of everybody. He needs to be saved and there's a life train coming through the bug. Nor is it going to be enough? No, Mid-1 gets on top of him and brings him the hell down. And now they look in towards more heroes. Saxon going to get on top of Misery and get that kill. Jive trying to get a bit of damage off onto mid one, but mid one is just being souped up so much by his team that he's feeling absolutely immortal right now. A jump forward again, but the crap fly comes out from Jive just in time to stop him doing any damage. The Luna's still dead and doesn't want to buy back for this one. Meanwhile, Tiny, with the tree throw, doing a decent amount of damage with that Ags of his, but unfortunately not quite enough as they just keep it on going. OG with the momentum. They want this Luna buyback. They're going to get the Earth Spirit. Not quite enough just yet to let them stop hitting this barracks. And mid one once again getting on top of Jive. Jive, Jive, the hook shot comes Jibbe through Chrono. and Saxon secures the kill. They do have that Chrono. Indeed, it jumps up to Luna. Luna just comes back to life. They have the Degrepha having 
to Crab okay. twice, so Ace is going to stay in the game a little bit longer, and now it might be OG trying to get themselves away. They have the Luna buyback. That is what they came for. Let's see if they can get themselves out. Chessy coming in from behind. He's got that tree volley as well, ready to go if he sees an opportunity. He's going to do it onto Socks to try and get that kill. It's successful in doing so. Now the face is void. He's going to be the target. The net comes out along with the light train as well, but he's got a time walk away back towards his teammate, but Chessy is ready and waiting with the top to get on top of him. Meanwhile, Ace are throwing in some spells. The vacuum comes out from seven of the back line. They are looking towards mid one, mid one, but another time walk, though. They just don't have the lockdown. They don't have the sustain to finish off the face of Spoid. He's got another time oh, walk to get down to the low ground. Can they keep him locked down long enough? Yes, they can. And no tells here as well with the Lotus Orb, with the shield, and they get mid one out easily. A hugely costly defense from the side of five men. No means worth it here. The Luna buyback was used. Jibbe's buyback was used. And all they get is socks. Oh, Jibbe. You can't die oh, here, buddy. No. You have no buyback. Oh, no. Sweet little Jibbe. The overclock. Into the kill. Onto the poke now. 75 seconds now. They just need to get these lanes out. They can walk right back up to the high ground. This Abaddon plus Faces Void combo is so obnoxious. You got the heals from the Time Walk. You got the Abaddon with the Apothic Shield and the Lotus Orb constantly keeping the Void alive as well. Roshan's They're alive though. They might actually trade. They're going for this crazy play here. I mean, they need to. They need to. They need they the have Hallelujah. To, yeah. But meanwhile, OG is in their base. They're attacking the barracks. Uh, it's going to be a hugely costly Roshan. But I don't think they have another opportunity to go for this. They will get it down Bro, eventually. Play. OG, are they going to notice though? Doesn't look like it. Where's the rockets at? Where are the rockets at, Soxa? He doesn't know. They really they don't got know. No idea. They've got no idea. Oh, they got to repair it. This is going to slow it down just a little tiny bit. The bottom racks is still exposed. Are going to be you know exposed what? soon. That's a trade they'll probably take. Now the tiny's yeah. TPing himself back. Luna. She just wants to pop this Manta to get this top lane pushed out before she TPs, but no, she's actually realizing the fight's breaking out already, and Pilot dies already dead. He does have a buyback buy with back. the Golem available, but meanwhile, Tiny, he is actually you know, having a bit of a kerfuffle with the Void. He's going to toss him over to Luna. Luna's like, what the hell? I don't want that. He gets brought down by the two of them. They need to kill off this Lunar Illusion, I think, but they're just kind of letting OG do what they want at this point. All right. Let's see if they've got another fight left in them, five men, but all this time, look at this Lunar Illusion just doing so much damage to their barracks. Ace finally realizes that we need to bring this guy down. And meanwhile, the tree body landing onto three and with the chaotic offering as well, they're able to take down one. Sox has lost his life, but Ace is in some trouble. He has got that age. Remember, the four staff away is going like, to keep alive a little bit longer. Chessie, he could be in some trouble. Has to pop the cheese. Meanwhile, Sax is on top of him. Cheese isn't going to do him much. He's still going to leave that in the three man chrono from mid one as well. And the quote, hold the back in the lunar as well. Ace, she's in trouble. He does manage to get off the glimmer cape just before he dies. Misery with the kick away with the roll up, but no one's interrupted by Sax. Now, Misery into the hands of No Tail. No Tail can finish the job. Meanwhile, mid one actually finds a Luna. Both the Misery and the Luna's Aegis will fall, and with just a Luna and a Warlock, it's not going to happen for five men in this game, number one, I don't think, as Aegis oh, nice. is getting cooked up good and proper, and the GGs are dropped. It's going to be game number one, going to OG. I mean, it wasn't clean, it was messy, but that's how they do it. It was clean by their standards, as they take down five men. They switch it on, and they could not keep up with the brawling. Even though they went for this brawling lineup, they picked this, uh, this Luna with the Tiny, with the Pugna, all these heroes which just wanted to fight all the time, but unfortunately they just couldn't match OG's aggression, and game number one will go to them. So even, I mean, break it down for us. What, what, what happened? It's so hard to say because the OG, I think, they played very well with this Clockwork and the Darks here, and then five men, they had this Luna, but it just didn't feel like it was going the right build. Uh, to fight into OG without BKB, you can see that the Luna just can't stand her ground in the engagements. She's just constantly running back and